Hey, I'm Bobby and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make some storage for our barbells and weights. Today we're back here in our garage where we're trying to build out kind of a home gym that can be pushed against the wall when we're not using it so we can still bring the car in. A couple of weeks ago you saw me build this weight bench. We've been using it a lot. It's working great. And so next up we need to build some storage. Specifically that storage for two barbells, one for my wife, one for myself, and a bunch of plates. We have a few different sizes of these weights with more on the way so we want to make sure that our storage solution can hold those barbells hold the weights that we have, but also have room to grow. And because we're trying to use this as an actual garage as well, we want this to go against the wall, underneath the window, so we can still pull a car in. And of course I know that you can just buy a storage system for the stuff in your gym, but it's more fun to make one. Basically, here's the plan. We're gonna make a really simple box frame that goes on the ground, and then each one of the plates are gonna set in it like this, kinda like a dish rack. So we'll have some sort of a divider in between them that you can slide up and down on the box to make the gaps different sizes for different plates. And then on one end for the barbells, I'm gonna put two pieces of pipe kind of sticking straight up. And luckily I found a perfectly sized pipe here in my store of stuff. It is a steel pipe, so I'm gonna to have to treat the edge of it so it doesn't mess up the barbell as it comes in and out. But we'll get to that in a little bit. First, let's weld up the frame. To get these ready to weld together, I added a small chamfer around all of the pieces on the grinder, and that gives you a little place for the welding material to go, and you end up with a better looking and stronger weld. Speaking of that, I wanted to throw this out there. A lot of times people will give me kind of a hard time about how ugly my welding is, and honestly, I'm not a professional, I'm just figuring it out as I go, but I do want to encourage you. You don't have to know how to do something to give it a shot, and it's okay to have slow progress as long as you're working towards trying to get a little bit better every time. I got that simple frame welded together, ground down the weld so it's nice and smooth on the outside, and I also cut down two sections of this two inch pipe. Now this is pretty rough on the outside, but the cuts are nice and clean, so next up I need to take a file to the inside and to the outside, but basically I wanna skate that inside edge to soften it up a little bit so that when the barbells drop in here, there's as little damage as possible. Obviously it's metal on metal, and eventually there will be some wear, but I'm gonna to try to soften that up. Then these are gonna get welded on the inside of the frame. These things are just about cleaned up and ready to be welded in, but I do wanna put something at the bottom of them. And then that'll give me a floor that I can put a piece of foam in. So when the barbell goes in, it doesn't hit the concrete below. I've got a little strip of metal here. I'm gonna weld it on the bottom of the frame underneath each one of these. That'll give me a floor that I can put a piece of foam on to protect the barbell. With those tubes welded in place, the barbell storage is good to go. So next up, we have to think about the plates. And I've started kind of thinking through this, but I don't exactly have a full plan. 
I'm still experimenting. Let me show you what I've got so far. The barbells are gonna go right down in here. Then we'll set these plates on these two side rails and that's where they'll stay. Now we need something here to stop them from tipping over. And so I'm trying to think of some sort of a little sled that can be dropped on the inside here and then take advantage of the weight of the plates themselves to actually hold it down. That way, when the plates are not in there, you can easily move it left and right. But when the plates are in there, it will hold it down to the ground. I've been playing around with some shapes here and basically I've got these two pieces of one inch pipe that are gonna set against the outside. And then I've cut these pieces cut to angles. I've been working on the angles on the grinder to get it right. But basically these will get welded in place right there and then together. So we'll make this shape welded into place. And this point right here is just barely under the center of the big circle of the plate. So the weight of the plate should be pushing against this point as it tries to lean over but it's also pushing down on these pieces. And then on the other side of that, it has this extension that's a foot to stop it from tipping. I honestly have no idea if I'm thinking about the physics in the right way, but I'm gonna weld this up and we'll see if it works. I got this thing all ground down, so it's actually ready for paint. It's looking pretty good. This is not attached in any way, so I'm gonna set it down in here. And the important thing here is that the weight itself is holding down the section that it's sitting on, so when it leans against the back, the whole thing can't fall over. I wanna give it a shot with a 35 pound weight. I'm gonna set this right out here on the very edge of the piece, and then lean it back against that point, and it holds just fine. So I'm actually gonna take it a little bit further out so it's just barely touching the feet and lean it back as far as it can go, and it still holds just fine. Now the cool thing about these weights is that the heavier they get, the wider they get, which means they're less likely to tip over like that. This thing can actually just stand up on its own with nothing behind it because of the width of the weight. Now of course you will run into the case where you have stuff on both sides of the centerpiece leaning together and they touch each other instead of touching this. That is a possibility and they could knock each other over. This is absolutely not a foolproof plan, just something I'm trying out. I'm gonna make another one of these sleds, drop it in here, put the weights on it and see how they do. Now I've got two of them, and the only thing I did differently on this one was to make the little foot a little bit wider. It's about an inch wider on each side. I think that's just gonna help give more room for the weights to sit on, and a little bit more foot to stop it from tipping over. Now I can always make more of these things in the future as we add weights, but right now we only have a few sets of these because given the pandemic, exercise equipment is actually kind of hard to get right now. This will work for what we have so far, but of course there's extra room down here for future growth. And in the meantime, we can always put kettlebells or some other exercise items just in the space on the floor. Now it's time for finish, and ideally I would powder coat all of this stuff because it would be a really hard, durable finish. Unfortunately, my small powder coat oven is not big enough to hold the frame. I could powder coat these, but in the interest of time, I'm gonna go ahead and use an enamel paint on all this stuff because I've had really good luck with it lasting over time with a lot of abuse. But if these pieces of metal rubbing against each other eventually take that paint off, it's not a big deal, I can always come back, grind that away, and then figure out a way to powder coat them in the future. The holder for our barbells is just about ready to go up into the gym, but I want to do one last thing just to add a little bit of protection. The tops of those pipes were filed down and they do have a layer of paint on top of them, so they're not rough metal, but eventually as the barbells come in and out of those pipes, they will wear away the paint. So I quickly went into Fusion 360 and made a ring that I could 3D print to put on top of there. This is the ring I came up with. It's super basic. It's basically just a collar that goes on the outside of the pipe. And then on the inside, there's nothing that goes down in the pipe, just something that covers the face of it. This is one of those things that you could do on any 3D printer, even if it's a really inexpensive one. And you can use Fusion 360 to solve little problems like this very quickly. Plus, Fusion 360 is free and easy to learn. If you want to check it out, we have an online course that can teach you all about it. I'm also going to use the scrap piece of the same pipe to cut out the circle of foam that we can push down there in the bottom. We made an allowance for that earlier. This will go at the very bottom of that pipe. 
to stop the barbell end from slamming into the ground underneath it. And these caps are a perfect fit, but I want to make sure that they stay in place when you're putting the barbell in and taking it out. So just like on the weight bench that I made, I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on the inside of this before sliding it on. It's not a permanent fixture, but it should hold it in place just fine. All right, these caps are on, this thing is good to go. I did notice something from looking at it in the camera that you can't really pick up on here in person. This pipe is actually welded on at a slight angle. Now obviously with the barbell sticking out of this up really tall, like 80 something inches, that little bit of an angle is gonna be compounded and it's probably gonna look a lot worse at the other end of the bar. But it is what it is, this thing is done. Let's go put it in the gym and see if it works. Here it is, it's a very simple solution to a problem that helps us get all of this stuff off the floor and into one place, under the window, up against the wall, so we can still pull the car in once we clean up the rest of the mess. These things are surprisingly stable, and obviously the more weights I get, the more stable it's gonna become, as there's more weight pushing down and leaning on everything. I don't expect to get any more bars, but if we need to, there's room right here in the middle to actually weld in another tube, and we could always do more on the other end or make a separate holder for the bars completely. But I think probably two is all we're gonna need for now. Quick note though, when we did the weight bench video, I put down these foam mats from Harbor Freight just as a temporary solution. These are not supposed to be here long term and I got a lot of great suggestions as to what to use for flooring in a home gym. Somebody said to use horse stall mats and so I've got some of those on order. Hopefully those will show up soon and we'll see how they work out. If you've got some other ideas as to how we can improve our growing home gym, I would love to hear about it because I'm very new to all this. Please leave me those suggestions down in the comments. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may want to check out, and if you're not subscribed, make sure to do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. It's not that hard. We've got a online a a a think of a good reason to have a even a e a e i o a a o in the lot in the bench. When we did the work bench weight weight bench. On a separate note, when we did the uh, okay. Please leave me some comments down in the description. Down in the description. Well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, leave me comments in the description.